So now that we've talked a bit about JSON and JSON inside Python, we're going to talk a little bit about how we store structured data inside Postgres. So uh, Postgres SQL su uh, support for JSON has evolved over time. Um, I kind of mentioned, and we'll talk a little more later, about how it is somewhat a reaction to the emergence of uh, JSON-based NoSQL databases. And everyone seemed to like JSON and liked using JSON inside databases and traditional relational databases and Postgres before 9.4 didn't support that. And so people are like, well, you know, I want to use JSON, so I'm going to just leave Postgres. Now, Postgres has a lot to like and a lot going for it. But uh, so the question was, is, was the market going to all shift to NoSQL databases or were the relational databases going to add uh, support for JSON. And so you can see the support for JSON sort of coming into Postgres sort of slowly, which I think is an excellent engineering strategy where they would put in things like HStore and then the simpler JSON format and then eventually the JSONB format, which is what we pretty much use today. So there are three supported column types and it looks a little weird to have all three of these column types, but if you think of it from a historical evolutionary perspective, it's not really nearly as weird. So the HStore column is sort of a precursor to all this, and I think it's a beautiful, beautiful structure. In a sense, it's like saying, I'm going to put a dictionary in a column, just a bunch of key value pairs. And later we'll talk about the idea of, do you really model every single thing in your UI in another column in the database, or do you sometimes just kind of throw them together in one column because you're not querying, etc.? And HStore is an excellent, excellent way to take 40 columns and collapse them. 40 columns that don't really need where clauses, but you can actually put where clauses in H stores too. So it's a way to, to also have an expandable schema so you can throw a new column in there, a new data element in there without actually alter tabling and adding a new column. And that's not to say that everything should use H store or that you should never use H store, but there are times when it's really nice to just have a schemaless little corner of, of each of your rows. So HStore looks like, you know, a dictionary, A maps to one, B maps to two, and that's in one column. It's kind of like an array. So Postgres has an array column, and it also has a key value column. And so that's kind of a, that maps very well to list a dictionary, array and object, and all this sort of linear and key value uh, structure. So HStore is great. It's kind of a good complement to arrays. But you can't do nesting in them. Right, so you got one set of values and that's it. You could name your keys with X, Y, Z, something, something. You could give a naming convention, but you're not allowed to go deeper. So the first um, JSON that was in Postgres 9.3 and earlier was really a glorified text field. And there are things you can do with text fields, and I'll show you in some of the demonstrations or some of the demonstrations you've already seen, where I'm doing things like digging into a text field, using a regular expression, and building an index on that, and then using a where clause with that same regular expression and having it do an awesome lookup, right? It's pretty, it's amazing, right? And so at some point, think of the JSON as just text, and then you do sort of regular expression work inside that. And then you build some functions to make some of that regular expression a little bit easier, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And you have things like the, the generalized inverted index, the gin, and you teach it a little bit about JSON, these text JSON fields, and away you go. And that's, that's text. So I, I could see how you'd put that in an early version because you could get that in earlier and quicker. And then the JSONB, which is the really cool column type, is... It's not a text field. It parses it. It knows that it's JSON. It keeps the key value pairs very nice and very dense. I can I just imagine all the cool optimizations that it can use storing JSON when it knows it's JSON. It knows what the rules are. And perhaps it even knows that there's a lot of similarity be some, between some of this JSON. So the JSONB, in many ways, has the advantages of the indexing and looking up and, and the dense storage of, of the HStore as well as the flexibility and the nesting and the, the coolness in general of JSON where you want to do the stuff that's sent across networks in JSON, etc. Uh, you can read up on the internet whether you should be using HStore, H -Store, JSON, or JSONB, but I would just say when in doubt use JSONB because that's where the market is going to expect that Postgres will have to invest more. And so if you want to want to use something that you know is going to be sort of focused on by the performance of JSONB is critical to the future of Postgres. The performance of HStore 
is not nearly as critical because with, Post with JSONB, Postgres is competing with things like MongoDB. And you see blog posts like the ones I've got where people are like, I tried Mongo and I quit. I went back to Postgres. And that makes the Postgres people really happy. And JSONB is the key thing that makes that happen. So now that we've talked about the things that are not JSONB and a bit of the history of, of JSONB, went too far, um, let's actually talk about the JSONB. I'm not going to talk about HStore much more, JSON. Um, and so this, I will do, do a nice walkthrough of this, but basically what we're doing in this one is I'm take, going back to my uh, iTunes export, export. It came out as XML data. Uh, I converted it to CSV in an earlier part of the class. Um, and now I'm going to convert it to JSON. And we're going to load that all up in a JSON to kind of play with our first real JSON database. And, um, and so the, we're going to make a table that just has got a, a primary key, ID primary key, and a body that's of type JSONB. And we got a clever little copy command. That clever little copy command um, is reading a file of JSON that has one, every line is itself a JSON object. We're, we're reading it as CSV, but it's kind of tricky. We're telling it the quote character is something non-printable and non-existent, and the delimiter character is something non-printable and non-existent, which means every line becomes a column, basically. So we're going to, and so that, but it doesn't matter because we're inserting it into body. We're only looking for one column, and so it's reading line, 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 becomes row, 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 row with that column, except that it's JSONB. So that means as this is being parsed and put in, and if there was a type of a mistake in the JSON or the JSON wasn't pretty, uh, had some, this thing would blow up and say bad JSON. And believe me, I've done this as I was making it all work. I blew it up a couple of times. So the copy command loads in all that stuff, and then we are going to play with some of the uh, operators. Uh, the the coolest operator is the uh, I call it the double arrow. It's dash let, greater than greater than. What that basically says is when we see select body arrow arrow count, and the count has to be in quotes because the keys in this JSON are, the keys are strings, right? The count is a string. Um, so you got to look up the thing inside this JSON body under the key count, and then this colon colon int, that says convert it to an integer. And we can do this in a where clause where the body arrow arrow name is summer nights. So that's basically saying select the count, the number of plays from JTrack where the body, where the name of the album, name of the track is summer nights. The other thing you can do in the where clause is use the contains operator, the at sign greater than operator. This is particular to JSONB. Uh, this equal operator for the body name Summer Nights, that was a string comparison, actually, because we retrieved the name and then converted it to a string. The double arrow converts it to a string. The single arrow body with one arrow, one look greater than, that would convert it to JSONB, and that would make that equality not work. But what you have on both sides of the at sign greater than is, in effect, a JSONB document. And so it's really, it's really an intersection. It's saying... Does body intersect with a tiny little JSON fragment of name Summer Nights? So if name, the key name goes to Summer Nights. And so it looks through all the whole JSON and it looks to see if it overlaps. So there's a, is there a mapping? Does it overlap? Where there's an overlap, that's why it's contains. Does body contain summer, name Summer Nights? There's a, and so that's what the at sign greater than is. And then the question mark actually simply says, does this JSON B body contain a particular key? And you can use these things in order by, like, you know, select body double arrow name as name from JTrack, order by body double arrow count cast to integer, and then descending. So that's basically the major fun operators to play with that we have. We will um, create some indexes. You don't have to use gin indexes. Um, you can also just use B-tree indexes. So in the, in the situation, I can say, look, I would like you to create an index. I want you to look inside the JSON, and I want you to make an index for body double arrow name. So that just, that's, that's then no different in a way than a column. You could actually pull that out and make a column called name and then index on it, or you can just index right into the SQL. And so I think that's 
really beautiful. And you don't have to just have one of those things. And so it means that where clauses like this where clause would be optimized and use the, um, use the index to uh, speed themselves up. We can have a gin, the, uh, the, the generalized inverted index on the body, and that really looks for the tag, the key values, and that speeds up things like this question mark operator. And then if we do a, the more richer uh, inverted index and we do chase on B path ops, that looks at all of the key value pairs and gives you an in inverted index of the key and the value. And uh, that's what speeds up things like this, where body contains name summer nights. And so these indexes, uh, we'll play with those indexes and create those indexes and then run queries and watch their performance uh, based on those indexes that we create. And so Postgres really understands the JSONB. It's very efficient, it's very fast, and it's a critical competitive element of uh, Postgres in the market going forward.